So it took pretty much two weeks, but Apple finally released iPadOS 16 Beta 2 to all registered developers. It is still not out to public developers yet. Be on the lookout probably in the July, early July time frame for that to actually get released to all the public developers. But today we are going to be going over iPadOS 16 Beta 2. And we're going to talk about everything from improvements to Stage Manager, which is what I'm most interested in. Because let's see if there are improvements because it was very, and I mean very buggy to the point where like I almost didn't want to show a lot of people that feature quite yet. But we'll talk about Stage Manager, all the overall improvements and bug fixes they've been making. And also finally talk about battery life because battery life is one of the things that with iPadOS 16 has immediately, I've seen an immediate difference on a positive side for the iPad Pro M1 battery life. But without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 16 Beta 2. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, and welcome to iPadOS 16 Beta 2. We're gonna be going over some of the things that I found out that were actually brand new. We're gonna be going over the build number, the battery life, even going over some of the release notes that Apple gave us, and you guys will see that there is an abundance of release notes, but let's start off with the classic stuff. And immediately, when we actually check out the build number, we're gonna see something different when it comes to the build number itself. So if we go to the About section, normally, when I would press on this 16.0, it would just kind of open up and show me more on that same view. But now if you click on it, you get a new little thing called About This Update. So we are on version 20A5303i. Before we were on the P moniker, which all that meant was that we're getting closer and closer to, I guess, the release candidate, to the final edition one. I'm assuming we're gonna have anywhere from six to 10 betas before we get the RC edition, because normally Apple actually starts in like the E to F range, and this time we started in the P range. So the closer we get to A, and the closer we get to getting rid of that letter moniker, the closer we will be to actually getting the new software released to the entire public. So that's what we're dealing with. So in terms of actual build size for this, it was about 1.55 gigs. But one thing that I will show you guys, which I think has to be a bug. So as you can see, we're in the photos application. And if I zoom out, you see that we are in stage manager mode on that secondary screen. But then the second I click on this, the screen kind of reverts back to its old ways of having black bars. Why? I really have no idea why it's doing that. But I did want to show you guys that as some of the bugs that you do deal with with a beta software like this. But you can see that the beta software was about 1.5 gigs. So give yourselves at least three gigs of open storage to get this updated. But also just to show you, once you do leave the photos application, it goes back to regular stage manager view, which you have right there. So now let's go over some of these release notes. Actually, the first thing that I do notice is the actual release notes section looks a little bit different. This is the first time I've seen like a left sided bar over here or navigation kind of section for all the different updates. But you can see that there's a lot and a lot of different things in here. But I would say 99% of them are two things. They're either issues that Apple has told us and they're like, hey, we are aware that there are issues and we're just letting them, we're writing them down and we're making them known issues to everybody that's in the beta software. Then there's also some resolved issues some workarounds, and then very few new features that I would consider. So overall, you can see that we have some known issues in accessibility, in AirPlay, in something called App Intense, in the App Store, in AR Kit, AV Routing, Clock, Court, like there's known issues in every single aspect of iPadOS right now, because again, it's such a new software with so many different features packed into it, especially on the M1 side. Unfortunately, I know that a lot of people are upset about that, but you can see that there are a lot of features that are known issues right now, right? In the maps, in messages, even though there are some new features and messages, but we'll talk about those in a little bit, but you can see that there's in metal, in photos, in proximity, in reality kit, like in room plan, shortcuts, series, stage manager, which one of the known issues in Stage Manager is that Stage Manager content might not display correctly when using resolutions lower than 4K, which I thought was a little bit interesting, honestly. But again, these are all things that Apple is making us aware of that they probably heard feedback from with the first beta. They're like, oh wow, there's actually a lot of issues that we need to clean up before the public release. So the first new feature that I do wanna talk about is inside of Display and Brightness. So we do have a new menu right here inside of this section for Stage Manager specifically. So these are all brand new to me, right? I've never seen this kind of display section. So you have the built-in retina display, which you can adjust from a setting standpoint. Then you have the BenQ monitor, which is the monitor that I use up here. If you guys can see, that's my BenQ monitor. And you can decide to do HDR or SDR. And also you have the display zoom setting, which is awesome to see. And then you have the ability to change arrangements, right? So if you have multiple monitors that you have plugged into a hub, let's say with iPadOS and iPadOS 16 and Stage Manager, you can now arrange them just like any other secondary display if you are as if you're on Mac OS or Windows 11. 
and you still have the ability to mirror the display if you really want to, which I'm hoping nobody ever goes back to that because it was a nightmare for, let's say, 10 years at this point. Another big one, which I'm going to zoom out for this so you guys can see. So right here we have the three dots, and before, the three dots were very, like, not very responsive. Like, I would normally have to, let's, so let's zoom in actually. But with beta 1, I would actually have to, like, go a little bit underneath the three dots in order for it to really work. Because when I would go to the three dots, it would turn into the resizing arrows, which would kind of throw everything off. But if I zoom out again, you can see that it's a lot more responsive. So you still have your options of full screening it, adding another instance, moving it over to like that side shelf view, or bumping it up to the secondary monitor. So you can see that it's still a little bit broken, like this little black bar shouldn't really be there. But again, it does move pretty nicely and fairly easily. If I go back down, go to Safari, do the same thing. Let's move it up to the main screen. You can see that that worked very, very well. And honestly, it's working great. So those are the things that Apple's actually getting better at with the performance stability and the bug improvements because that's all iPadOS 16 Beta 1 was, right? It was a bunch of brand new features that Apple was just throwing at a wall to see, to make sure that we all liked exactly what we were seeing. And then they would go back in and fix all the issues. But like I mentioned, there is an abundance of issues and known things that are happening on the back end, which Apple really needs to get fixed. But another new feature, which is gonna be a little bit hard to show you, so I'm just gonna read off of it here. So another new feature was actually in messages. Developers now have the ability to classify incoming SMS messages from unknown numbers into 12 different categories. How that really helps you, I don't know, but it's probably gonna be categorized as like spam, as notification SMS messages and things like that. But overall, now they can be categorized much better. And then also another one which was a surprise to me was that our messages now support the ability for customers with dual SIM iPhones to filter the messages based on their known SIMs. So as you guys know, the newer iPhones have the ability to have a physical SIM and an eSIM, and it's not until this beta release on iOS that you can actually filter them based on the different SIM card phone numbers that are on your phone. Is that Save Manager content might not display correctly when using resolutions lower than 4K, which I thought was a little bit interesting, honestly. But again, these are all things that Apple is making us aware of, that they probably heard feedback from with the first beta. They're like, oh wow, there's actually a lot of issues that we need to clean up before the public release. Another one which I didn't know was around, it might not be new for beta 2, but I did not know that you could actually use your arrow keys to navigate the sidebar. So it works in all native applications, so if I go to the settings menu down here, and if I zoom in, you guys can see that it moves also with my arrow keys. So that's great to have when it comes to just easier navigation on the iPad Pro. Another new addition is on the backup front. So before iPadOS 16 beta 2, you had the ability to backup your iPad via Wi-Fi and 5G. If you were on LTE, it would not back up, but now they are allowing you to back up your iPad via LTE, which is always nice to have. And then one more section that I wanted to bring up is the features that we didn't get. So on iOS, the big stuff was the lock screen and the new wallpaper UI. That's something that did not come to iPadOS. So if I go into the wallpaper section, this UI is exactly the same as before, right? You still have your normal selection, you have your stills, but you didn't even get any new wallpapers, I don't think compared to last year. Versus on the iOS side, it's a much cleaner situation, a much cleaner interface, a much cleaner UI, something a lot cooler. And that probably has to do a lot more with all those lock screen animations and the new widgets on there, which, which sadly iPadOS did not get and probably will never get at this point, unless maybe they touted it as a new feature for iPadOS 17. But that would be Apple just doing what Apple does. And then what I want to do lastly is zoom out, show you guys that Stage Manager is actually working a lot better. So you can see how fluid it is over here. So you can see that it works a lot more fluidly as it did before. Like it's a lot less crashing already. And I can tell because some of the functions that I was doing before would easily make it crash. But I can grab this, move it over here. The resizing of windows is actually a little bit more fluid as well. So if I grab my Safari, move it in here, it kind of like knows what I want on the forefront versus what I don't want. And when you are just dealing with two panes, it does kind of equally resize them perfectly. And I still have the ability to go down here and let's say open NBA 2K and play my NBA 2K game, no problem whatsoever. So multitasking, it's, I mean, multitasking and secondary monitor support is getting a lot better. And I'm happy that we are getting to that point. One thing that I did want to bring up when connecting to an external display via a USB-C cable, USB-C hub, or even HDMI, the music or the audio will still default to whatever monitor you are using. So this BenQ monitor does have built-in speakers, but when it comes to volumes up and down, you cannot use the regular volume up and down key to change the volume. You have to use the controls on the monitor or the controls on a controller that this monitor did bring in order to adjust the volume. And as of right now, I have not found a way to default the audio to come out of the iPad. The only way to get out of the audio usage on the monitor is to use some Bluetooth headphones or some wired headphones in order to default that way. But again, overall, I'm just happy with how Stage Manager is running, how smooth it's going. 
again, it's just it's something that we've wanted for a very long time. And I'm just happy that it's finally starting to come to fruition. As you guys can see, I'm moving all these windows over here. Everything's working as advertised and Apple is getting to the point now where this could be the future and Mac OS might be an afterthought for a lot of people using the iPad Pro because the iPad Pro is just a much more versatile and a much more fun machine to use. But let's jump into battery life real quick and then end the video. So let's jump into the settings and talk about battery life a little bit because battery life is something that which I have noticed it's it's getting better I think like this is one of the first times where I can say that a beta software is actually doing better than the previous software so if we go to day like Monday right here we got five hours and 40 minutes of screen on time on just about 100% power right so LumaFusion took about two and a half hours photos 53 minutes and also keep in mind that I did sign up for Apple one recently so I have two terabytes of iCloud storage and there's a lot of background stuff going on with my battery with uploading like thousands and thousands of pictures and videos into my iCloud. But you can see on a day like Tuesday right here, where I did about four hours and 44 minutes of screen on time with only 25% battery used up. Think about that, right? A lot of it was in Safari, some of it was in the background, but overall, guys, this is a great battery day right here. And then if we go on a day, let's say like Saturday, we had an hour and a half of screen on time, about 75% used. We had about two hours of screen on time here, less than 100% used. So it really just depends on if you're using Apple's native software, you're gonna get great battery life. As these third-party apps, especially the task-intensive ones, like an Affinity Photo, like a LumaFusion, like having four or five PowerPoints open at the same time, I'm hoping that starts to kind of get optimized a little bit better now that we have a lot more RAM management and RAM support to divvy up the battery life and kind of help out with battery consumption. But overall, I'm extremely excited with Apple and what they have to do with iPadOS 16. But let's finish up this video and get out of here, everybody. So as everybody saw, from a tangible feature standpoint, beta 1 to beta 2, there wasn't really much of anything included in there, because obviously all the new features, or at least the announcement of the new features, all came in beta 1, right? All the big stuff like Stage Manager, which is honestly the only thing that we ever wanted with iPadOS. But most of the stuff when it comes to beta 2 was all stability improvements, bug improvements, as I showed you guys in the release notes earlier, a lot of it was Apple, first off, letting us know like, hey, we are aware of all these issues, and there are some workarounds, and then we have resolved some of them. So it wasn't a lot of new feature sets, it was mostly improving on the stuff, you know, being aware that there are issues with the beta software right now, because again, this was a beta 1 to a beta 2, it's still very early, and Apple still has a good amount of time to get it ready for September, October, whenever it does actually release to the entire public. So overall, from a stability standpoint, it is getting a lot better. It's still not perfect, but I could say now that I could actually use that secondary display support, whereas before it was almost unusable unless you did things in like the perfect correct order, and before even then it sometimes wouldn't work. So now it's getting a lot better in terms of secondary monitor support with Stage Manager, and I'm just enjoying it. Like this video was edited entirely in LumaFusion on a secondary display on the iPad Pro. So that's something that I've never been able to say, and I'm so happy that I am able to say that. So I have my like, notes on my actual iPad itself on that monitor, and then I have the actual footage and the timeline and the LumaFusion stuff happening in real time on the secondary display. So I am very happy with what Apple's doing. Overall, battery is improving, which is amazing to see as well, which is something I thought would be even worse with iPadOS 16, but those are all things to take note of. So Apple, kudos to you guys for finally listening a little bit. I know there's a lot of argument that it's still not exactly what we wanted, but to me, it's everything that I wanted out of the iPad. And once it starts to really release to the entire public, I'll know that it's ready to go. And at that point, we can kiss Mac OS goodbye, everybody. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments below so I know that you guys made it to the very end of the video. And if you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS 16 content, hit one of these videos right here. Until next time, everybody. Peace.